Hello, Professor Oak. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Let's Glitch Pokemon Yellow. Today I'm going to be showing you what I believe to be the original final battle of Generation 1. This works in red and blue as well as yellow, as you can see. The special stat we're going to be using is 226, and we're going to do the long-range trainer glitch here. And then now we just need to go fight a trainer. I would cut this out, but I'm just going to show this because I haven't done it in a while, and if you haven't seen this before, you wouldn't know how to do it. So, here's your little rough tutorial. So we're just going to fight a trainer I have picked out down here. Oops. A few things you're going to need here is a, of course, the Pokemon with a special stat of 226, and a Pokemon that can growl, I should say that. I'm just going to fight this guy. Horn attack, oh, yep, there we go. <laughs> and another thing interesting here is this is actually a Missy you know I have here, but I combined it with an Almastar. This is one thing I wanted to show off briefly on here, which is something interesting to like. I love that Missy No, this is the yellow Missy No you get in the game. Um, and it has like this little party effect, changes like what sprite it has in the party. And I also have this weird Pikachu here that knows Surf and Fly. I'll go a little bit more into that here in a minute. But for now, we're just gonna go through the Pokemon Mansion and get a Ditto. I did bring repels this time, believe it or not. As you can see. So we're gonna hustle through here really quick. <laughs> it has been a bit since I've recorded a video, if you can tell. And get through here. I'll never forget this though, you'll do this a lot when you do glitches in this game. Because anything that involves a ditto, you basically have to come down here. And you also go to Cerulean Cave, um, but I prefer this. So now we're just gonna find a ditto. If this takes too long, I'll cut it. I'll probably do one more. Yeah, so I'm just gonna cut it until I get a ditto, so I'll see you guys there. Alright, we finally found a ditto. Thankfully it didn't take too long. Oops. I'm gonna switch into Jabber here. It has a special stat of 226, just as a little reminder. We're gonna leave. <laughs> Before we leave the mansion though, I'm gonna show that um <laughs> you can see your Missy No has the uh the book as its like sprite menu. Oh, it's not letting me click it. Usually I get this pretty easily. There we go. <laughs> so you can see it's a book. Um, but this is basically the yellow missing no. I combined it with a almost star. That's why it's called almost star. But you can see there it has a weird type. Um, its stats are almost star stats. And you can see there it says missing no. And it has the weird glitchy um, EXP and level up points. But what's cool is it actually can level up on its own. Um, it just looks glitched. And I'm going to view the stats of Charizard here just because I need to uh, view the stats of a non-glitch Pokemon to revert my sprites because viewing the stats of, or the yeah, other stats of Missy No will <laughs> basically destroy your sprites. And I'm going to use an escape rope here because good luck getting out of here without it. Um, if you encounter a Pokemon, you have to redo it and yeah, find another ditto. So I do not recommend that one bit. I'm going to return back to the route and then the menu will pop up. As you can see here, we get Professor Oak, which is really awesome, <laughs> because that means that he does exist as a trainer in this game, as you can see. Um, oh, his loadout's not really anything too special here, as you can see, it's just an electrode and a wheezing. So we're just going to speed through this, honestly, because nothing too special. Um, but we use the attack stat 7. Um, something interesting is that, basically... The original loadout that every trainer has, because you know this glitch trainer is basically existing between special stat 200 to 255. Um, I want to say basically loadout one is their original like intended loadout, because that's the case for a handful of trainers. Lance, for example, in the one video, I don't even remember what part it was, we had that um, Squirtle that was 205. Um, I'm actually going to... Yeah, I'm going to finish what I'm saying and then I'll cut to find another ditto basically, because that's the next thing I'm going to do is show off loadout 1, is that basically loadout 1 is the intended loadout you'll encounter. Um, we had Lance that had that Squirtle that was 205, that was also attack stat 7, but if I had done loadout 1 um, with the attack of the, yeah, the attack stat 1, basically we would have his normal loadout that he has in the Elite 4. So basically, my point is, is that I assume that Professor Oak was supposed to be after Blue in the, um, the Elite 4, maybe as the champion, I'm not sure how that would have worked. Um, clearly they removed him for that reason, and maybe he would have worked like red and ro um, gold, silver, and crystal, where he's like, you know, the, the final challenge trainer type deal, or even Steven from Pokemon Emerald. Anyway, so I'm going to cut until I find another ditto, so I'll see you guys there. 
Alright, now that I found another ditto, I'm gonna switch into our special stat Pokemon, Kadabra. <laughs> Yet again, another reminder, special stat 226. And what's unfortunate about using this Kadabra is that it has double team and also has a mimic. <laughs> Which doesn't go well with my Charizard here, because I have to grow out at least six times. And it has Mimic, and it can probably learn... Ooh, okay, good. Yeah, then we have to learn Fire Spin, that makes things really complicated. If this takes too long, I'll cut it, but we'll see. Um, so I just need to grow out six times. So there is one... Two... Three... Four... Five... And six. Great. And then just to make sure. Whenever. Ah, oh, nope. Whenever you get nothing happens, that's how you know you're good. Yeah, there we go. But yeah, it's really annoying when it uses double team, it makes things a bit more difficult. So now we're gonna return back to the route. What's interesting about Professor Oak is actually his first three loadouts are interesting. And something like Blue, for example, is a trainer you fight over and over again. It's like his loadouts kind of stack on each other. Professor Oaks are kind of similar to that. Um, what's interesting is that Champion Blue has a similar effect to this because it's based on the starter that you have. This applies more in red and blue, but also in here in yellow with the Eevee. So now I'm just going to let it play here. Hello, Professor Oak. As you can see here, he has a Tauros <laughs> at level 66. So it's about on par with Blue, as you can see. So it would make sense that he would come after Blue. Um, I, I assume that he was either supposed to be the original champion, and maybe Blue was supposed to be part of the Elite Four, or maybe they were gonna do, like, champion, and then like, oh, Professor Oak's gonna test you at the very end. Who knows? Um, it's a really interesting thing to think about. But clearly, he was intended to be in the game, because you can see he has a pretty stable team here. It's rel relatively balanced, it looks like it's supposed to be in there. Um, like I said, it's, it's similar levels to Blue. Um, <laughs> we're gonna take a little bit of a detour here, or a tangent, and talk about this uh, Pidgeot I have here, technically Pikachu. So the game thinks it's the Pikachu, even though it's a Pidgeot, you can see from its sprite, but the color is a Pikachu. And the way I got this was, if you remember in part 12, um, it was the Q glitch, I believe. I can't remember what part it was, but it was the Q glitch. I combined a Pikachu with a Seedra, and got a, basically a yellow Seedra that knew Surf. Like, I taught the Pikachu Surf after that, and it could be a Surfing Pikachu to play the Surfing mini game. But now I combine what I got from that with this Pidgeot, and now I have a Pikachu that knows Surf and Fly. So that's something pretty cool there. What's unfortunate is Pikachu's not very good, as you can see here. Um, like, I'll, I won't even be able to one-shot this Arcanine. And I didn't even one-shot the Executor either, which is kind of sad. If it was a Pidgeot, it definitely would have one-shotted the Executor at level 100. Oh, but we got a crit. Nice. Well, I guess that kind of goes against what I was saying, but either way. But it's pretty nice. I have a Pikachu that has Surf and Fly and has the basic electric type move. I should have taught it Thunderbolt though, that would have made it a lot better. So we're just going to beat up this at Blastoise here. As you can see, the first loadout has a Blastoise. For some reason I thought it would have been Venusaur. It would make more sense to me, because like, especially in red and blue, for example, it makes sense that red would have taken Charmander, blue would have taken Squirtle, and then Professor Oak would have been left with the remaining starter, Venusaur. Or, I should say, Bulbasaur, sorry. But for some reason he has Blastoise for the first one. I'm assuming the next one would be Venusaur, and then Loadout 3 would have Charizard, is my guess. Ooh, this might hurt. <laughs> that might clap Pikachu. <laughs> yep. <laughs> As you can see there, there's that little cry Pikachu does. Let's see if Almostar can take it. Or I should say Missing No. I forgot to change his name, but Piggy. Um, hmm. I don't think it's gonna do it. Yeah, no. That was a bad idea. Level 70 Gyarados don't want to mess. That's another reason why, like, he had to have come after Blue. He's higher levels than Blue. Oh no. We're just gonna switch out. Um, I don't want to lose anything. We'll just use Venusaur. And there we go. And what's interesting too is that he doesn't have any glitch checks after this. It's just all too much. And then gives us a decent sum of money. But that's basically what I believe to be the original final battle of Generation 1. It would make sense that he came after Blue, as I've said multiple times now. Um, I really wonder if, like, when you go to the Hall of Fame, if he would battle you there. And as I was saying, that I'm assuming that his starter would base off... It wouldn't make a difference in here, 
Um, I don't know how that would have worked out, but in red and blue it makes sense. Because, like, for example, if you chose Charizard, he would have Venusaur. Because blue would take the advantage, and then you have the advantage against Professor Oaks. So yeah, something interesting to stumble upon. Um, it's basically what I would call the original battle, thus the title. That's all I have for you today. Um, I have one more thing, actually, before we go. I didn't get into it. This um, Pikachu here is interesting. Uh, basically, basically on the experience growth of Pikachu and Pidgeot, as you can see there, it's different. And it can actually lead to a really interesting result. And that's something that we'll see for next time. So I hope to see you guys there. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.